Hi, I'm Santo from VintageComputer.ca. Today we're going to be covering the serial card for the Nabu PC. This is an option card that is in addition to the floppy disk controller card and allows you to run a terminal with the Nabu PC to get 80 column output. This is the setup. What we're going to do is we're going to go through, I will show you uh, how to basically connect it up and we're going to take a look at how it works and see it run. So this is the Nabu PC serial board. Uh, it is in addition to the floppy disk controller board, so this card actually plugs into the uh, floppy disk controller, but we'll take a look at that uh, shortly. Now, this is available through Clyball's website. I will put a link in the description so that uh, you know where to get that. And uh, a big thanks to Leo Binkowski because it is actually his board that we cloned uh, for this particular project and uh, Leo when I talked to him about it he said that basically there was a couple of different reasons for the need for the board one was for terminals for developers and anyone who wanted 80 column output uh, the other one was for modem use so he actually used it with modems I don't know how that was done but maybe not something that uh, would need to be done these days uh, and the other thing was for transfers to the uh, NPC 1100, which was the uh, large developer unit. So uh, that's basically what uh, this board was used for. In our case, nowadays, uh, we would probably use it more or less for the 80 column support. But uh, anyway, let's take a look at how the uh, unit is installed in the NABU PC. So what you can see here is the Nabu PC with both the floppy disk controller card and the serial card attached. Now, as uh, had been discussed in the floppy disk controller video, you basically have the option board, which is connected to the floppy disk controller board, and then the serial card is actually connected to the floppy disk controller board. The floppy disk controller board goes first. So uh, in this case, I have shifted them a little bit um, in terms of slots. The floppy disk controller could go in this slot. I 3D printed a couple of uh, slot covers, but I need to adjust them. So I haven't uh, done them fully yet, but this is the setup and how it is normally set up. Uh, there is a possibility to have a second serial card. So you can actually have uh, three cards in here with no issues, but there is a small issue with the connectivity. So I'm going to go over that in just a second. So what we have here is the NABU PC motherboard. Now in order for us to be able to use the serial card, there's actually a modification that needs to be made to the motherboard to get the proper voltages to it. Now the floppy disk controller board doesn't have any special requirements other than what was uh, out of the box. But uh, the serial board is actually a developer option and there is an actual modification to the developer units that allow the serial board to work. When connecting the floppy disk controller board, this power adapter is used to give it 5 volts and 12 volts. What we need to do, however, is modify this so that we can provide minus 12 volts to the serial board because there is uh, the uh, communication chips that require a minus 12 volts and the dev units actually have a modification to the board to be able to get that voltage because the voltage is right there. This is the opposite side of that corner of the motherboard and what you can see is the white wire. However, there is actually a cut trace that's cut on the other side of the motherboard and a jumper between two pins. So the bottom side of the board, you can see the five pins for the plug numbered one through five and the eight pins for the power supply, which supply various voltages and ground. The modification actually has a cut trace between plug pin two and plug pin three. And that is actually on the top side of the motherboard underneath the connector. Now I've actually done the modification to mine 
and I've done the factory modification and taking that plug out is really uh, dangerous because you can actually lift traces pretty easily. But I've done it because uh, I want to maintain the same connectivity for all of my cards between all of my uh, Nabu PCs. The other uh, part of this is that there is a jumper between plug one and plug two pins. Those connect ground. Plug three is connected to power supply pin eight, which is the minus 12 volts. And this is basically what we want to get to uh, to be able to run the serial card. Now, what we're proposing is an alternative uh, modification, which is much simpler. Uh, it, it doesn't involve cutting traces. However, uh, there is um, some wiring that needs to be changed on the top side. So uh, the, the motherboard still has to come out. You still have to put a, uh, a jumper from PS uh, Power Supply 8 to be able to get the minus 12 volts. But uh, plug pin 2 actually is not used. And uh, in the factory modification, it actually jumpers uh, plug 1 and 2. But uh, what we're suggesting is going to uh, put minus 12 on plug pin 2. And uh, that doesn't need any cut traces. You don't have to take out the plug on the other side. Uh, if you want to be true to the NABU PC and the way it was done back in the day, then you can do the factory mod. You don't have to do it. I did it because I, if I switch cards between machines, uh, I don't want to have to worry about which one goes with which because there is another change that is required. And uh, we'll take a look at that now. Now on the top part of the screen is the factory modification that was done to NABU developer PCs. What you see is the five pins, uh, which is uh, the top two are ground, then there is the minus 12, as I had mentioned prior, and then the plus five and the plus 12 volts. You can see the colors are black, black, blue, uh, reddish orange, and yellow, and those are just um, colors that I use because those are the wires I had. Now the alternate with the single jumper wire basically says uh, or puts ground on pin 1, minus 12 on the blue wire which is pin 2, ground on pin 3. That actually is normally there and uh, when we do the factory mod we're actually cutting that uh, trace so that we can use that pin. Uh, but uh, again you don't need that for the alternate uh, modification and then uh, plus 5 and plus 12 are already at the uh, reddish orange and the yellow pins. Now the important thing to note here is that this alternate um, pinout for the 5 pin connector is to be done only on one of the cards if you're going to do the alternate uh, modification for minus 12. Now if you have a floppy disk controller board only you do not have to change anything because you don't need the minus 12 volts. If you do get the serial board, then you basically have to make the modification for the serial card to work. So there's two basic um, th things that you can do. You can either modify the floppy disk controller board so that that power switches and then it is then factory, um, factory configured for the rest of the boards. Or, uh, if you have the floppy disk controller board, uh, you can leave that as is, and then you can modify the connection to the serial card and change the power on that. Now, the reason why we don't basically say change the serial card only or have it come that way is that if you get another serial card because you can have multiple cards and there may be some cards coming down the road um, then this change needs to be made to the serial board or the very first board, which uh, in most cases, or all cases, is the floppy disk controller board, um, so that the rest of the cards have the proper power. Now, um, it's, it's just something to keep in mind that if you make that flip of the uh, cable between pins 2 and 3, Keep in mind that um, the floppy disk controller will be fine. 
but the it, the flip has to happen before the serial cards. So that's basically uh, the the issue here. Now, when you take out the motherboard, uh, here's a picture of where the standoffs are, the plastic standoffs, and the red arrows are where the screws are. So there's three screws in the back, six standoffs that you need to uh, loosen up, and it is a little bit difficult, but you can get it out. Um, be very careful of um, pulling it out from the, from the front first, because the back you can't lift off. You have to lift it from the front and then uh, pull towards you so that it, because some of the connectors in the back actually uh, connect to the back of the case so you can't just lift it up straight up just keep that in mind so once you lift the motherboard out um, there's actually a cable that connects to the front uh, leds if you've ever done any uh, playing around with the motherboard, this red wire here in the middle is the reset uh, button, so keep, keep uh, track of that. But where the yellow warning arrow is, is the ribbon cable for the LEDs, and that is uh, quite fragile. There's some hot glue on there that um, uh, kind of holds it in, but be careful when you go back and forth with the motherboard. Uh, you can remove the LED panel if you want, you have to take out the cover of the power supply and then remove the screws for the LED little uh, panel. But uh, it's a bit of a pain and uh, you can probably do it while the motherboard is still attached. Just be very careful when you do that. So having said all that, um, we got the power straightened away. This now is what it looks like with the two boards in it. So again, we have the small option board, which is connected to the four uh, ports which are on the bottom left of the motherboard uh, as we're looking at it here you have the floppy disk controller which is connected um, as the first board uh, closest to the left uh, which is roughly in the middle that has the 30 pin ribbon cable that connects to the option board and you have the power connected to uh, that now modified power connector then uh, lastly, on the right, you have the serial board, which is then connected with the 30-pin connector to the 30-pin uh, pinout of the floppy disk controller, and you have the power connector that is connected to the floppy disk controller. Now again, as we just briefly, one of those uh, needs to change, so you get the minus 12, but uh, as long as you do that, it'll go through fine. Now, uh, if you do not do the minus 12 or there's something wrong in terms of uh, connecting it, uh, the serial board just won't work. Okay, so now we get to play. Now, what I have is I have the serial board, as we discussed. I have it connected with a null modem adapter. Then I have a 25 pin to 9 pin uh, switcher which switches from nine from 25 pins to nine pins and then i have my uh, nine pin serial to usb connected to my pc so what we have here is the setup which is the nabu pc on the left side with the green screen as is the case for cpm3 we have on the right uh, a terminal that's got a monitor connected so if you look off just to the side there, there's a Microsoft Surface that uh, is running the terminal software. And then you can use a regular terminal. Uh, in my case, I'm just using a PC to emulate a terminal. Um, so let's go ahead and run the commands to get this thing to work. So the major command is the device command. So if I type in device, what this is going to tell us is all of the physical uh, devices and the current assignments. Now, the two that we're concerned with is con in and con out. So right now, con in, which is console input, is set to keyboard, which is KB. And console out or con out is set to TV, which is the composite signal. Now, what we need to do is we need to add RS1 to this uh, list because the serial card is RS1. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set con out colon equals rs1. Now, one other thing that I found was that you can actually do TV and have two outputs at the same time. So I'm going to do that so we can see both screens. And there you see the output. Now, the other thing we can do is we can type in um, device again, okay, and that'll show us what devices are there. And uh, so you can see the con out is set to TV and RS1. Now let's set con in to uh, keyboard and RS1. So con in colon equals RS1 and keyboard. Okay, so now I can basically type anything at the keyboard or I can type at the terminal and they both work. So uh, it's just another neat thing that you can do. And if we look at the device command again, we can see that uh, both con in and con out are set to RS1 plus uh, their respective keyboard or TV output. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run a game. And what I have is I have suspended on here. I'm going to type in suspend. Now uh, I do have this game. It's uh, in a box. It's never been used. I don't know how to actually play it. But uh, what, what I want to demonstrate here is basically the output. So on the left, you can see that there is still the 40 column output uh, that the Nabu PC provides. And there is now the 80 column output through the terminal. So uh, you can basically see the difference there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit. Um, and I'm going to say yes to this. And then one last thing I'm going to do is just do a quick dir command and you'll actually see the difference in the output. So you can see on the Nabu PC it's 40 columns. It is uh, the same as you normally see it. On the terminal it is 80 column. And uh, the interesting part is that you can use the arrow keys to scroll back and forth for the Nabu PC so that you can see the 80 column output, but obviously on the terminal it doesn't do that. So um, that is basically the uh, output and what happens with the serial card. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comments section. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can again get this through Clavolt website and uh, I will see you later.